All right, and we're going. Hi, Moore. Matt, how are you? Good, thanks. How you doing? I'm good, man. Summer's wrapping up, but I'm still happy. <laughs> yeah. like nothing, there's no depression creeping in. I'm still loving it. It's coming. <laughs> are you enjoying the summer? Yeah, you know what? It's been uh, it's been really good. Been yeah. a long, been a long, long summer. Um, I'm not used to kind of being home for three, four months. Three, four months. And uh, you know, I haven't had that long time, but uh, it's been good. And uh, looking to get back at it. So it was uh, shol- shoulder surgery. That's what you had. Yeah. So basically, the rundown on that is to jump bas- into it. Yeah. I mean, just a general because there's so many scientific words, but uh, basically, what it was was a total reconstruction of my shoulder. Um, it's not the, not the name of it. It's called a ladder J surgery, but basically what they're doing is making it stronger than it was yeah. just, you don't have as much movement. So that was no fun. You know, we're, we're sitting in a sling for seven, eight weeks. Um, I was on my couch. <laughs> There's some dark days, man, but, uh, shoulder's good. Yeah. I know when, <clears throat> like when I ever hear about NBA players and when they get an injury on the yeah. leg and they're they're almost nervous to jump again and hockey like a shoulder is a big part of it like do you have any like second guesses when you're training right now in the summer or is it like you're 100 percent confident with it well it's funny because this is my second time going through uh What's shoulder your surgery. second time yeah so i did the first time um it just didn't stick we didn't have a it wasn't the same sur- surgery yeah. but i had it when i was 15 um or si- yeah 15 going into my uh, 16 year old year okay. in st john and um it just it, it just gave away and that's you know sometimes that's the way it goes just erosion and and whatnot but um yeah i mean it's my second go around so i kind of know what to expect um is there apprehension absolutely but i'm lucky that i got a couple games at the end of the year and yeah um i'm i'm 100 percent like i feel really good i can do everything um you know i'm playing golf and yeah you know i'm doing everything that i need to do and want to do and so I, i i'm ready to go and excited to not only test that out but test out all the work that i put in um because i've been in the gym since december jesus <laughs> it seems like you're just eager like you just want to get out there and play you're like enough sitting yeah. around enough golf it's like i just want to get back to chicago and get going yeah and you know what the, the summer's been great because i've been able to you know hang out with my friends uh family you know it's it's all those things and that's been fantastic but i'm starting to get the itch here um within the last couple of weeks that i just want to play yeah and uh you know i feel like i'm i'm close to where i need to be yeah so that that that's making me feel like i gotta get in the action and honestly you know i'm a competitive guy and uh a couple of weeks ago we had a club championship uh at brightwood and not to go into to it to it too deep i, I played terrible <laughs> but the whole thing was competition and i loved it you know i practiced every night for you know 10 days going into it and um you know, it's just something that I miss. I miss the battle. I miss con- competing. So do you think that was a, a character trait in you since you were young playing hockey was the competitive edge? Because most kids, when they're playing hockey, they just they do it to have fun. Maybe their parents want them to be there, you know, maybe because they have friends there and they're playing the game of hockey. Mm-hmm. But do you remember at a young age, you're just like, you're trying to stay humble, but in your mind, you're like, no, I want to win right now. Yeah, well. Because that I, character trait can last a lifetime. Well, exactly. And I think that, you know, from a young age, my parents knew that I hate losing. Um you know, I, I was probably a sore loser when I was younger, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah. I, until you learn how to lose, you know, you, you don't know how. So, you know, I, I kind of give you a story. I mean, I guess back in the day, we were playing Go Fish at home. And it was just like my family and uh, my sister was playing, my parents. And um, I knew I was going to lose. So I just 52 card pick up, threw it everywhere just so I wouldn't lose. So, that you know, that I think that that's something that, you know, ever since I was five, six years old, I just do not enjoy losing. And that's just the way it goes. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you a scenario where you didn't necessarily lose, but when you went undrafted, did you have that almost same feeling as losing Go Fish? Just the same, just yeah. like, what the hell? That's a that's an interesting question because, you know, I've never really thought about it, and I'm sure I'll kind of look back on it and say, you know what, this is what brought me to where I am today. But when I when I didn't get drafted, I was like, oh, that's a kick in the ass. You know what I mean? Like, that, that sucks. And nobody would... You know, I guess it was kind of a loss because I, I wanted to get drafted just like any other kid. And I still uh, want to get drafted. Yeah. You never Who know. doesn't want yeah. like, <laughs> I, would love, I would love to go back and get drafted. You know, it just, uh, it seems like such a big deal. So, yeah, that, that was kind of a loss. But, you know, I guess when you lose, you got to get back up somehow. So what's the motivation right away? 
Like I remember when I was 16 and all my friends were getting drafted to the queue. I didn't get drafted at all. I had a trampoline in the back and I remember just bouncing on the trampoline like, fuck, Justin, now what do you do? You know, I remember I went and played high school hockey from high school hockey to major midget and then major midget to the queue or to junior A. And then I got called up to the queue. So it was like a long road. But I remember as soon as I saw all my friends get drafted, there was just a moment of me sitting there in my room thinking, okay, what are you going to do? You're going to sit here or are you going to go try to do something different? So what was your immediate reaction? Was it like, let's go to the gym. Let's go shoot pucks. Was it sit and soak in it for a minute? I think, you know, it may or may not be something that I'm proud of, but I think I kind of dwelled on it a little bit too much because it was such a big thing. And I was like, Oh my God, like this is the time I'm going to get drafted. And that just didn't happen. So probably didn't take it the proper way. Next year I had a tough year. Um, confidence was hit yeah it was just one of those things i always knew that i could do it so it wasn't that i ever gave up it was just one of those things that i just i couldn't get over it just hurt so bad you know what i mean so um you know eventually you get out of it and i I, yeah but i I was i was gonna say i don't think there's anything wrong with sitting in it because you got you want to remember that feeling yeah you know like if you remember that feeling remember that hurt the next time you're in the gym, just remember that feeling and be like, all right, we'll remember that and push towards something different. So I don't think there's anything wrong with yeah. kind of sitting in it. Well, exactly. And I mean, I don't think that it changed the way I trained or went it on did. the ice. Okay. Um, it was just one of those things that I just carried around and it was like an extra layer. I was like, man, this sucks. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. But you get out of it. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like anything. You, you continue to look at your goals and um i think for me i have such a great support system that i how so Who? just so obviously my family my friends um i kind of keep it a, a tight circle and uh my trainer alexi pianozzi actually he's uh he's kind of the one that probably got me out of it him and i have been together now i guess 12 years and so basically anything i need to bounce off someone he's the person i go to so um you pr- probably credit that one to him Wow. Yeah. Even though he's in Pittsburgh, you just text him, give him a call? <laughs> well, you know what? He's he, At that time, he was with Moosehead. So How I would see him, and I was in St. John. So we'd see each other a whole bunch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're good friends, and we talk every well, couple days. I mean, now in the summer, like, I see him every day. Yeah. He's probably sick of me, but... <laughs> you know. Is he over on the ice with you guys, not on the ice, but does he go to the to the BMO over there with you boys? He doesn't, no. He's just strictly in the gym. And, is he? Um... Yeah, I mean, it, I can't say enough about him. He's been he's been fantastic for my development, and not only as a player, but yeah. as a person. And um, you know, certainly credit a lot to where I am today to to him. Um, I want to talk about where you've uh, been training on the ice this summer. You're with Sid and Nate and all those boys right now. What's that been like? Obviously, that's the best sheet of ice in the world right now. What's it uh, What's it feel like to be on that ice every day? Yeah, it's. Uh it's nice. It's first of all, very challenging. And I mean, I think that that's what you want in a summer skate. Um, you know, you go out there and you see how competitive those guys are. Um, Nate, Sid, Brad, um, you know, those guys, we, we play two on two, three on three at the end of the game, at the end of practice. And nobody wants to lose, you know, we're like, okay, one more game. Like, no, <laughs> so it's like it's, that. It's like one more game. Cause yeah. you want, that's wicked. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's exactly what you want in a summer skate. And, um, those guys are great guys. And, they just go out there, work hard, work at their craft, and um, you know I've had I've had a bunch of fun out there. They, uh, you know, they welcome me, and um, I'm glad that I can be out there. Don't lie. When you're, have you gone one on one with Sid yet in the corner? <laughs> uh, probably not. You haven't? Yes, I don't you have. Thi- I don't think so. I honestly, I'm not real sure. You're just like you just don't you don't even realize who you're going against. You're just kind of just out there, and whoever it is, it is. Well, My- yeah, I guess. I mean, you get out there, and you're like, well, all right. I got to try and beat this guy, yeah. whether or not you do or not. I, you know, it doesn't the, well, the question was the the strength of some of these guys, yeah. like the down low strength and how you're trying to get the puck off them. You just can't move them, especially oh, when they're in the corner. Yeah, no, and I mean, strong, quick. Yeah. You know, it's exactly what you think of an NHL player, and you know they're they're there for a reason, and um, you can't move them. So you, what do you do? <laughs> well. <laughs> You know, it, it's a battle out there because you're, you're thinking, well, you know what? Can't beat them for strength. Probably can't beat them for skill. Got to somehow stay in a pocket. You know what I mean? Like, you, you can't can't reach. You can't do this. So, it, 
I mean, it's just like playing games in the, in the NHL. You just read and react. Um, for me, I mean, I don't think that there's one thing that you can point out and say, oh, hey, you poke check them. You don't do that. But, you know, it, it's a read and react thing. And until you're in the in the space, you, you don't know what to do. Do you think uh, – how long have you been on the ice for them now? Like a month? Uh, yeah, it's probably going on about three three weeks Something like that. Have you noticed anything in your game these past three weeks that even just a little bit of edge that you've seen uh, increase? Maybe it's speed, strength, uh, quickness when you're accepting a pass. Any, any little detail that you think you've improved with? I think it just overall being sharp. You know, yeah. you go out there and you're like, well, okay, well, I, I've got to be sharp because everybody else is going to be sharp. And we all expect to, to go out there and have a good practice and, you know, miss very few passes. Obviously, you're going to miss some. But go out there, be sharp, do your thing. Um, you know, for me, I think because I only played 10 or 12 games last year, yeah. it was all about getting up to speed. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm starting to make strides there, just playing at top speed instead yeah. of, you know, going out there and making sure I don't make a mistake. Now it's, you know, going out, trying to play at the speed. And if you make a mistake, so what? So what's it like going to the United – is the uh, training camp at the United Center or are you guys at the practice arena? Practice facility, although, um, I mean, there's there's stuff at both. Yeah. It just – it kind of flip-flops. And this year I think there's a lot of preseason games because they're going to, to Germany. Uh, are, do you know if you're going yet? I don't know. Obviously something I'd really like to do. And yeah. I think that, you know, if you, you go over there, you're obviously close to making the team too. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think – there's always the option. There's always the chance. Um, you know, I feel good about where I'm at. And good. We'll, see. well, if you're saying that your shoulder is 100%, <laughs> it sounds like you're in the best shape of your life. Was yeah. that an accurate statement? I, I would say so. I mean, last year I went into camp in the best shape of my life. But this year, you know, I've just had so much time where, you know, I was wearing a weight vest for two months because I couldn't hold anything. And I just, I, I just think that now it's a different kind of probably proper shape, you know, to, to be able to play. and. Hockey um, shape. Yeah, hockey shape, especially yeah. with these skates. I mean, these skates are doing a world world of good for me because they're, they're up-tempo and, um, you know, conditioned. Yeah. So um, I, li- I like where I'm at right now. Obviously, leaving two weeks, camp's probably not for another month, but I like where I'm at. 27-and-a-half-hour drive up to Chicago. <laughs> yeah, we got we to gotta plan out a route for that one. That one's, that's no fun. Where do you stop off at? Well, it, it seems to change all the time. Um, we do, we try to go, try to go straight to Montreal, the Montreal, you know, Toronto or the, the American border. It just, you know, it's, it's so far that you can't really plan it because you're like, well, if I get tired, why yeah. bother? Cause it's going to be three days either way. Three days, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm going to leave on a Saturday and try and get there by like a Monday afternoon. It must be nice going up there though, having a car. It would suck to get up there and just be like, all right, I got an Uber everywhere. Yeah. You know, you got the car. Yeah. I mean, at least it gives you some freedom. And, you know, if you want to go play golf on a day off, go ahead. Smart man. Yeah. And and last year I was, I was lucky. I got to, got to watch a little bit of tennis when it was there. So, you know, it just kind of gives you some more freedom and um, you don't want to just be in your hotel room. It's going to be, it's tough enough mentally you know, training camp. So if you can get out and do some, do some things for yourself or, you know, with the boys, it's, it's certainly an added bonus. Did you check to see if there's any preseason games with the bears? I haven't actually, you know what? That's one of the things on my bucket list. I haven't been to a football game. Dude, God, I, I haven't either, but yeah. I have buddies that have gone to, especially to a bears Packers game in Chicago yeah. said it was the most electric atmosphere, electric atmosphere they've ever been a part of. Yeah. I, and you know what? There's two things on my bucket list this year. It would be a Cubs game. Yes, I haven't been to a Cubs game. And uh, hopefully a playoff game. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and a Bears game. It's just – sometimes it's just tough to get out. You know, you go for dinner and you're like, well, I could go to the game, but it's already 7 o'clock and <laughs> yeah. got to be up early in the morning. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Like I said, bucket list thing. But yeah. I guess the main focus is making the team, not not jumping around and – yeah. going to games well exactly and i mean a day off it's you know walk around the town um maybe it's a trip to lulu or something like yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it's something very similar or simple that uh you know just takes your brain off it it's not necessarily sometimes some guys don't like to go sit for four hours yeah that's you know what i mean so for everyone that's not in the nhl most of us and they want the experience of an nhl training camp 
maybe tell a little bit about, you know, what's day one like? You check into the hotel, you go to the rink, you, you register, and then uh, isn't there like a fitness testing? And then essentially just give the rundown of what happens from day one on. Yeah, so I guess day one, there's always, you know, a kind of introduction meeting. Just, you know, it's it's kind of the same stuff every year, but it, it brings everybody together, um, meet new guys, whatnot. And um, next day, uh, so day two, we'll do uh, in Chicago. I know it's a full day of fitness assessments and, um, you know, ours is pretty extensive, which I like. I think it's good to, to know where you're at and fitness wise. And um, day three, it's time to get on the ice. And uh, it's generally workout um, and escape. Okay. So that, you know, workout and escape is pretty pretty normal for training camp. Yeah. Um, now, one thing that we do in Chicago um, that's different from other teams is it's called a training camp festival. What's that? Um, so basically, uh, they fill the United Center with um, fans. Like 20,000 people? <laughs> 21,000 people, whatever it fills. No. Yeah. Um, and it's an inner squad game. That's how strong the fan base is in Chicago. They can fill it for just an inner squad game. Yep. That's insane. Yeah, it, and they have absolutely no problem filling it. <laughs> you know, the they have stuff going on outside. There's, um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on outside, but a bunch of stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I've never Bouncy been there. Bouncy castles and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> seriously though. Yeah, <laughs> bouncy castles and and whatnot. But yeah, and then uh, people come inside, and um, I think the last two years it's been three twenty minute periods um whether or not that changes this year i'm not sure but uh yeah it's like a real game and it's it's nice actually it's really good because two days later you're in a preseason game so oh, well preseason game with, against other teams right two days after this training camp festival oh wow that's quick yeah yeah two two three days and you're you've got to be ready to go so who are you guys playing uh in your games is, is the schedule out yet it's out i have not looked at it um okay. Trying not to look at it too too soon. Is there a reason for that? Um, I just, you know, obviously we're getting closer, but I don't think I need to drown my brain in thinking about it. It's just you don't need any more stress. You already have enough. Yeah. Um, you know, I know what I need to do from now until September 12th, and that's basically my focus. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I'll look at it in a couple of weeks, but just not right now. In situations like this where you're trying to make a team, do you almost have to be a little bit selfish when it comes to your play? Like, obviously, you want to make the people around you better. But going into a training camp, you obviously want to show off your skill set. What's your mindset about going in to these situations, to these training camps? Like, you want to prove yourself. I guess the question is, yeah, do you, do you want to stand out as much as possible or do you want to make people around you better? Because there's a argument for both sides if you make people around you better it's going to make you better as a person but if you know you're not that type of player maybe don't try to fall into that yeah see that's for me that's always been an interesting kind of question i don't i personally try not to change my game yeah um but yeah i i think you get to a certain level and it's not necessarily about proving your skill it's about proving your worth What's the difference? Um, I think, you know, everybody's skilled. Yeah. So your worth is, you know, can you penalty kill? Can you block okay. a shot? Okay. Can you, do you go to the dirty areas? You know, do you go to the front of the net? And I think that that's kind of what makes you stand out. Um, and that's my opinion. I'm sure other people have other opinions. Yeah. But going into training camp, I'm like, well, you know what? Obviously, I can skate. I can pass. I can shoot. But what separates me from the pack? Yeah, because everyone at that level knows how to play hockey. Exactly. So, you know, is it penalty killing? Is it, you know, even mixing it up a little bit? Just just something that maybe your team needs. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing, too, is when you go into training camp, there's a lot of, you know, for instance, in certain years, there's going to be like seven guys fighting for two spots. You know, and, and you, like I said, you have to do something different. I'm not saying that, you know, there's seven guys this year, but just in general, there if there is, you've got to separate. And um, doing something a little bit different um, certainly wouldn't hurt. It's almost reading the situation and then reacting from it. It's almost seeing what the game needs and then stepping up and being that guy. Exactly. But at the same time, you don't want to change your game. Yeah, it's like, you're right. you got to dance yeah, on that it, line. It's it, interesting. Yeah, it, it's a fine line for yeah. sure. Um, but 
you've got to know what you're capable of. And if you can provide that and know that you can provide it night in, night out, then go ahead, go ahead. And, yeah. you know, you kind of, that's your green light and maybe that's your ticket. All right. We've got a couple fan questions. You game for that? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. All right. We'll get to the lighter subject. First <laughs> question is from Billy. <laughs> Took a hit at the Canada Games versus Sue Ban's brother. What was oh, that yeah. like? I don't know anything about that, but what? Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Canada Games. All right. So I'm going in. Uh, I think it's first or second shift. How old were you? Uh, fourteen. Oh, this is at the Metro Center. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So everybody. Yeah, I think it was fourteen or fifteen. So we go in. Obviously, pretty good crowd in the Metro Center. Really jacked up to play. Get the puck dumped in the corner. All right, so I'm going to go chase it, and I see Subban. I'm like, okay, like, you know, I'm going to go get the puck. Didn't think I was going to get cranked. I got absolutely hammered. First shift, hammered. <laughs> First shift. Yeah. And and the worst part about it is the story continues. I got cranked again by Subban, like my third or fourth shift. And then I'm sitting there thinking, holy jumping, I cannot move. So anyways, long story short, we're going back to a shoulder injury, but I separated my shoulder. Superman got me twice. <laughs> it cranked me. Like, I, I've never been hit that hard. In front of friends and family. Yeah. So that was, uh, my Canada Games lasted about a total of a minute and 45 seconds on the ice. No way. Yeah. You left the game. I left the game, oh, left the tournament. <laughs> dude, I did not know that. I shouldn't have asked that question. Oh. <laughs> Billy. Coming from Billy. That's Billy's fault. Don't <laughs> Come on, Billy. You know better no, to ask that. That's a good question. No, it is, uh, it's quite funny. <laughs> All right, the next one is from Ryan Langell. Uh, what's the best advice you've gotten from veterans in the Chicago locker room, and what's the feeling walking into the United Center for the first time? Well, I guess we'll go with... Uh, you know, what's the feeling? First of all, it I may be biased, but I think it's one of the best buildings in, in the NHL. You know, it's just, there's such a, you walk in, um, there's just such a buzz. You go for warm-up, there's a buzz. You know, and, and I don't think that you necessarily get that everywhere. So that's, you know, it, it's super cool. It's yeah. super cool. It's yeah. still like a kid in the candy shop. And, <laughs> um, you know, that's what, that's fun. Yeah. Um, as for the best advice, uh, you know, I think gotten a lot of advice um the bit the best advice the piece of I, that i've gotten is probably just just go play and i know that that you know people say it but when you hear it from you know people who have done it who have been there so you know for instance that was jonathan taves he told me he's like just go play you know you go you go to um training camp just go play like don't play up tight because then it's it's not going to work just go play and i mean i know that that's very simple but when you're having fun you're playing loose that's when you're at your best and um you've just got to be able to get yourself into that mindset yeah it's a great answer just play yeah you've been playing it your whole life yeah exactly as simple as it is it 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 is the truth Yeah. yeah All right, and then he squeezed in a second question here. I guess the, this will be the third one. Yeah. Uh, your first goal was at the United Center. It was a – or no, was it at the United Center? Uh, TD – Oh, second goal. Okay. Your second, second goal, goal was at the United Center yeah. uh, from a pass from sad back door. Mm-hmm. How cool was it hearing Dragger being played after the light, the lamp? Oh, Chelsea Dragger. Chelsea Dagger. Dagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all – I don't know if you know, but Chelsea Dagger, they, they, every goal is this, since I've started watching the Hawks, I mean, probably 10, 12 years, every time they score, they have the same, they've had it forever. Oh, the song? The song. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. That one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it was kind of cool. <laughs> um, you know, it, honestly, when it happens, doesn't, you don't hear it, but. You just yeah, black out. Yeah, well, it's kind of a blackout situation, yeah. exactly. And, you know, it's still only my second one. But, yeah, it's cool to hear it. I mean, you, you hear it when, when you're on the bench. And it's it's just something that, you know, you've heard all your life watching them. And uh, now you're kind of sitting on the bench. Kind of weird. But, yeah, you know, it's it's becoming more normal, I guess. <laughs> so what's the atmosphere like in uh, in Rockford there? Well, what's, what's the feeling there in the room? Professional organization? First class? It is, yeah. yeah. And, and the Hawks really look after us um you know arguably one of the best i i would say from you know being there arguably one of the best in the ahl um you know they they just look after you yeah um you know it's uh and it's funny our team in rockford um 
our coaches have done a really good job over the over the two years that I've been there of keeping it loose. Um, we probably have the most fun in the AHL, <laughs> and I mean that like we could be you know we could lose seven one the night before, go to practice, and everybody's obviously it sucked. Yeah, but everybody comes to the rink and has fun and. Um, are we serious? Absolutely, we're serious. But we want to create an environment where you're having fun, enjoying hockey. And that's key to success. You know, if you're having fun, you're playing better. You don't want to be gripping the stick. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what we, I guess, preach down there, especially especially as leaders. You know, let's come to the work, rink, work hard, have fun. Um, and I think that that's what gives us the best chance to be successful. That's what you want. Just to go to the rink and have fun. Yeah. You go to the rink, have fun. You're, you're going to get better if you're having fun. Um, you know, obviously, there's time to be serious and there's time to you know lock it in. But for the most part, it's got to be light. Yeah. Um, and that's just, it's kind of unique. And I don't know if it's because we're so young. Yeah. Um, and the two years that I've been there, we've had nothing but young guys. Yeah. You know, a couple of veterans, but they like to have fun too. So, you know, why change? So what are you doing this year when you're injured for like showing up to the rink? Are you just showing up and jumping on the bike? Are you showing up? Are you in the room? Cause an injured guy on a team has a different role when it comes to the whole, the team environment. So where did you see yourself this year before you started playing? Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. Cause like my days would start at like 7am and I'd be in physio. <laughs> So then I, I would still get to the rink before everybody. So I'll physio from like 7 to 7.45 and get to the rink at 8. I wouldn't see anybody because they don't get there till 8.30, 8.45. Why so early, though? Because I've got rehab. <laughs> like wow. I, I would rehab from like 7 in the morning to I probably wouldn't get home till about 1.30. Um, so you'd just be at the rink. Like physio was at the rink. Physio was at a separate location. Okay. Then I'd drive down, be at the rink by like 8 o'clock and um, do all my rehab workout bike um massage um well, stretching yeah i mean but it comes long days but you know i, I didn't really see anybody <laughs> they come off the ice hi Z, how you doing <laughs> yeah good, good to see you guys how was practice <laughs> i mean i didn't see any practice and that was kind of tough it was it was tough from the standpoint of not necessarily being part of the group but they did a great job of you know, keeping me part of the group. And, you know, I tried to give some feedback if I could and, um, you know, do as much as you can. And yeah. there's no point in me walking around being, being miserable. Um, so that was another thing, like come to the rink, be happy, you know, do my thing, work hard and, uh, try and try and keep everybody upbeat. Even when we did go through some tough times, um, as a, as a team this year, kind of after Christmas. How do you keep that routine fresh? Like if it's repetitive, you're doing the same thing for I don't know how many months you said. How do you how do you keep that routine fresh and make you – I know it's tough to want to go to physio every day, but yeah. there must be something in the back of your head thinking, okay, I'm going to just kind of switch up the routine or, or do you just keep it the same? Well, so for me, I always kept in my mind that if we're going to make playoffs, I'm going to play. So did I change the routine? Maybe not. Um, I stuck with it. But the big thing for me was – look, I'm going to play in playoffs when we get there, so I just have to grind this out. And it was just a complete grind because there was days where I'd be like, oh, gee, you know, alarm goes off at 6.30, like, <sighs> shit. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't want to get up. But, I mean, it's just like anything. But um, they're just long days. You, yeah. know, you, you come home from the rink, and I'm like, well, nap time. <laughs> and then it's dinner. <laughs> and then you're back to sleep. So, um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't. The other thing, too, is, like, there's so many goals in reha rehabilitation, you know. So one day it was like, okay, I want to be able to get to 90 degrees, you know, external rotation. Or, sorry, 45 degrees external rotation. Okay, well, let's, you know, so it's little increments and little goals. And I don't know if that gives you a whole picture of it, but you just have to continue to see progress. And that, for me, was the biggest thing. Um, you said when you go home, who are you living with at the time? Were you got teammates on the, you living roommates? Yeah, I had, uh, I had two roommates this year. So Darren Radish, um, he actually got traded, uh, start of March, I think to who 
uh to new york to okay. rangers yeah. yeah so um that was kind of kind of sad he's yeah. one of my best friends so it was uh that was tough you know you never want to see your your buddy get traded but yeah. happy for him you know he's in a good situation and um whatnot my other roommate was luke johnson um he started the year in chicago and then um came down to rockford and um we had, we had a great time. <laughs> who cooks in the who cooks in the relationship? Oh gee, yeah. See, this is where it gets tricky. I would say I would I did. Did you? But it, well, here's the thing. I'm like, well, the boys boys worked hard today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you got the time. Uh, I have nothing else to do. I guess I'll cook. In all in all uh, reality, I, I just like cooking. But you know, that's kind of the way we looked at it. What's your go to meal? Oh. Uh, go to, I'm, I'm a big stir fry guy. Oh yeah. That's fair. So, you know, whether it's rice or, or noodles, it's always chicken though. I like a, I like a chicken stir fry and, um, you know, keep it kind of simple, but you know, sometimes, some nights we went crazy. Where's in Rockford, they got good restaurants out there. There's like three or four spots that are top notch. Yeah. Um, and we wear them out. <laughs> they just but, know you're coming. Like well, pregame? You know, at Sunday night, like we'll play like a 4 o'clock game on Sunday. We'll get off the ice. Somebody, whoever's first undressed, will call Green Fire and say, hey, 25 guys are coming over, <laughs> plus like girlfriends, wives. So can we have this the private room? And they always have it ready for us because they, they, they know. <laughs> um, That's the best part about hockey, man, just yeah. chilling with the boys, eating food. Yeah. I well, love it. And you know what? It's not, e- not even like we're going to go out or anything. We're just go have dinner and you know next thing you know it's 10 o'clock and you're like well may as well go to bed you know because there's not a whole lot to do yeah um but yeah the, there's always stuff going on the boys have fun and you know sometimes there's poker nights too and we'll uh we'll try and keep it interesting you got to yeah do you ever go on the road with the boys this year i did um so in Rockford, we're like an hour from Chicago, an hour from Milwaukee. Oh, are you? Yeah. So we That's did, great for other sporting events. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I've caught a couple college games and yeah. college basketball games. Marquette's in uh, Milwaukee. So. Sick. But yeah, so I, I would do a couple of those. Um, and then an, at towards the end of the year, when I was getting closer to playing, um, they took me to Manitoba, to Winnipeg, sorry. And um, that was nice. That was, that was the best. Like, that, I was... I was so excited. Was Why? Like, like no offense, but like going to Manitoba, like people aren't really excited. Why were you just pumped? I just, I just wanted to get on the road with the boys. Yeah. I was so excited. I was <laughs> like, okay, we got, we got two games here. You know, I'm going to take morning skate first time in, you know, months. Going to work out, which, you know, didn't exactly have me fired up. But <laughs> then you watch the game. I, I, I can't, I do not like sitting on the couch watching my team play. You know, obviously you don't like sitting in the stands either, but it's so much better and you can see so much more. So, you know, sitting in the press box even had me excited in Winnipeg. I just love, <laughs> just love watching the game. Like, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was really nice when they took me and, um, you know, got to know some of the newer guys. Newer guys? Oh, was this after the trade deadline? It was, yeah. So we had a we had a little bit of movement and we had some college guys come. Um, when they finished their season, they came down and... Um, it was it, like I said. It was just nice to be away with the boys and um, you know do the regular things. Go out to dinner the night before, morning skate, like I said, and just getting a routine that um, you know I've kind of been missing. Yeah. Well, it's nice to get out of the routine of just going and doing something the same, and then going up to Manitoba. Even though going to Manitoba doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun, just yeah. saying, yeah, you know what, I'm going to Manitoba and I can't wait. That's uh... well, and, and the other thing too, I was like. Yeah, I'm going away with the boys, but I also get to see a couple of my buddies. Like they play for Manitoba. So oh yeah, that, that was fun. Uh, Logan Shaw. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, true. Luke Green as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of nice, and it, it it's just you know just being on the road is obviously when you're playing, being on the road isn't as much fun. Yeah. But I was just so fired up. Did you think you learned anything this year from watching a lot of hockey up in the press box? A lot of people say when you're up in the press box and yeah. you get that view of the ice, you you learn a lot more about the game. Do you think you learned anything at all? I do. Yeah. I do. I think that honestly, in the long run, this will help me. Yeah. Um, obviously, nobody wants to be injured. No. <laughs> um, but I can now sit there and say that I might be able to pick apart a party game a little bit easier. So, for instance, say we had a tough first period, like my line mates and I, and 
maybe I can pick up on things quicker. So I'm like, okay, we can make this adjustment instead of doing this. For me, I think that that down the road is going to be really helpful. Yeah. Um, did I ne- necessarily learn about the game? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but I learned adjustments. You okay, know, I see what you're you saying. Know what I mean, like yeah, there's yeah, a little yeah. bit of a difference between the two, and uh, well, I guess there's not a whole lot of difference, but yeah, um, I think I think it's going to pay off absolutely. Yeah, it's an interesting perspective. Like you know, you look at the injury, obviously you're a little pissed off, but yeah. you look at it now, it's like okay, you're healthy, best shape of your life, shoulders 100. percent You have a little bit more of perspective on the game. Yeah. You know, if you take all those things into consideration and then you bundle them up to right now, you're going to Chicago in two weeks. I don't know. Just in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you yeah, know, that's a. I'm not saying it's helped you, but it, it's definitely there's something there that's. I think that's going to push you towards something better. That's just my thought process. I don't know. Well, well, a little rest I, never hurts either. No, you know? and, and you know what? I, I agree with you. Obviously, you never want to throw throw away a season, but you also have to look at it from a positive uh, perspective because if you're going to be negative, then yeah, what like you're not getting yourself anywhere. So for me, like I said, feel good about my game. Feel healthy. Um, you know, did I learn some stuff last year? Absolutely. I sat on the couch for, for two months. You know, if I can get through that, I can get through just about anything. So things are looking up. Um, obviously, season's a different animal, but uh, I'm excited about getting back to being who I am. Yeah. And back doing, to the hockey, hockey match. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And doing what I love. And, um, you know, it's been a long, long year. So we're looking forward to... Looking forward to training camp, obviously, a couple of weeks. but. Well, I was going to ask you, at the Jordan Boyd, you said that you were up in Chicago for a little bit. What were you doing up there? I just went up for a week uh, just to train. Um, I thought that it was kind of a good thing for me to go up there, gauge where I'm at. Yeah. Um, so train with the boys. Um, so you went on the ice? And skate as yeah. well, yeah. So it was it was a good, like, measuring stick. Um, I came back and, you know, felt pretty good about my work. And I was like, okay, well, I'm close, but let's work on this. Let's work on that. And um that was a great week you know there's five or six guys there what guys are up there uh taves oh you were skating with taves yeah dude yeah and uh connor murphy to um strom yeah so it was a good group that's unreal yeah, it was a real good group and um the skates had some other nhl players as well uh vinnie hinnestrosa who plays in arizona uh, jt confer and so the skates were really good i thought it was i thought it was great for me to go there see where I'm at and yes. I took it kind of home and um now that I'm able to skate with Sid and Nate you know that's uh that's been great as well so it, it's kind of all coming together and I feel like um starting to put the pieces together what's Johnny T like as a guy <laughs> you know he just three cups under his belt yeah. arguably some would say the king of Chicago not the, you know that's a little far-fetched but you know what I mean the guys yeah, yeah. he can do whatever he wants in that city well, what's he like as a guy is he a jokester in the room is, is he quiet what is he what's he like he's just the nicest guy honestly. just a nice guy yeah eh? like just him. play hockey yeah I mean he just loves coming to the rink working hard and um you know playing the game that we all love it's it it's you know he's, it's kind of crazy because you go into the situation you idolize these guys and then you're like they're just normal guys you know they love playing the game and um he's no he's no different he's a great guy and um you know enjoy being around those guys that make you better i remember you said that when you got called up for the first time i didn't didn't you say you were sitting next to kane in the room yeah you were like sitting next to kane i remember i asked you i was like oh, so it was training camp actually training camp yeah my first training camp yeah and then i asked you, i was like so like what's it like in the room with those guys and he's like you, i remember you said you know you're a little nervous before but then once you get there you just realize they're just guys that are good at hockey there's nothing different they're just they're guys that are there to play yeah. some hockey Exactly. And I mean, I think, you know, growing up, everybody puts people on a pedestal. Definitely. And rightfully so. You know, these guys are the best players in the world. But at the end of the day, they're just people and they're, the, you know, good people that work hard and are good at their craft and, and love winning. And, um, you know, so you have a lot in common with them because everybody wants to win and um, everybody likes what they're doing. Yeah. Is it nice to know that when you go on the ice and skate with them, that you're up to their caliber and you're able to, to keep pace with them and you're able to build chemistry with them, knowing that in the future these guys could be the teammates of yours. Is that a good feeling and a confidence builder, I guess, going into camp? That's that's what I was saying to um, – who was it? 
yeah, it was Ethan yesterday. He went to BU for a week just to yeah. get on the ice and go to school and meet his teachers, meet his coaches, meet some yeah. teammates. And he's like, it's such a great confidence builder because when I go there in two weeks, I'm just going to have no problem. I'm just going to go into a motion that I already know. So the fact that you went to Chicago, do you feel a little bit, you know, I don't know less nervous, not nervous, but, you know, camp's a little nervous, but yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you feel a little more comfortable going into Chicago in two weeks? Yeah, I think so. Um, that was another reason why I went up there. Obviously, I wanted to get up there, um, train with them, see what they were doing, but also just to feel comfortable in the situation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, know the daily routines. And uh, just because I haven't done it for a year and a half. Like, I haven't been in – I mean, yes, I did training camp last year, but I didn't get a chance to play up top last year. So, you know, to kind of refresh my memory, to, you know, be around these guys was just – it was nice. And comfort level – more than uh, more than confidence yeah but it, it, I, they kind of go hand in hand what's the routine what's the difference of a routine from the ahl to the nhl same routine different yeah, he, pretty close mm-hmm. um you know you, different coaches have different things but uh they're, they're pretty much the same you know yeah. get to the rink around the same time most likely you work out before or after it, it's all pretty much the same but um you know, it's again, it's just being comfortable in what they want and expect out of you. What do you think the biggest step is to making it to the NHL? A lot of guys have a lot, uh, a big different answer. Some guys say it's um, repetition. The more reps you get, the more you're on the ice, the better you get. Some guys say it's. Uh, I had another great answer from someone this year. Someone said it was comfortable with your line mates and getting chemistry with people. Some said it was opportunity that you need people to get hurt in order for you to go up to get your op- your chance. Yeah. I got a bunch of answers this summer. What's yours? Well, what do you think that that difference is? Yeah. Again, that's a it's a tough question. I think that for me, it's all about being comfortable in the situation. You know, uh, not necessarily, um, you know, just knowing that you're part of this. Yeah. You know, just feeling like you're included, um, just kind of along those lines. I think that, you know, everybody can play. So if you feel comfortable that you can go out and perform, that to me gives you the best opportunity of, of, of sticking. And it's exciting knowing that that opportunity is right in front of you. Like, exactly. How can you not just yeah. be a little kid right now knowing that, that is, you just got to go out and grab it? Yeah. And, that, and, that, and ultimately, if you go in, obviously you go in mature, but – you know, if you go in like a kid and have fun, then your your chances go way up. Well, just like what Johnny T said. Yeah. Just go and have fun, play just hockey. Go play. Yeah. So yeah. these next two weeks, what's on the what's on the agenda? Is it still getting on the ice or is it resting? Uh, yeah. I remember Conor McGregor before he fought that big fight against Floyd Mayweather. He's just like, you know, two weeks before you don't really train hard. You just kind of relax, make sure your body's in great shape. You, yeah. you don't push yourself too hard. So what's your what's the regimen right now for you? Yeah, um, kind of wrestling with that a little bit just because I've put in so much work over the last, you know, five, six months. So I think for me this year is, um, I know next year, or next, sorry, next week, uh, training is going to go down a little bit. Um, you know, make sure that I'm really, really ready for skates, prioritize skates and um, get on the ice a little bit more and, um, you know, just feel rested. You know, it's a long summer and I've had a long rehab, so to make sure that I, I'm getting my rest, you know, can I get my nine, 10 hours and nine, you go nine, 10 hours. eh? well, I try, I, I don't, but man, <laughs> that's I'm, tell- the goal, man. I'm telling you sleep's a big, yeah. there's a, who was it? I was, I was reading or not reading. I don't read. I read, but I was watching <laughs> oh, wow. a YouTube video. I was watching a, a YouTube video of Usain Bolt's trainer. Yeah. And apparently he said that Usain sleeps like 12 hours a day. Yeah. And it was the same thing with Roger Federer. And there's a rumor that before Usain Bolt went out and beat the world record for the fastest sprint, I don't know what the distance is. Okay. He was taking a nap 30 minutes before that race. He had a 30 minute power nap before he went That's out and did it. And this guy's philosophy on sleep was if you get enough rest, it can almost turn you into a, a, a super athlete. They're, they're saying yeah. there, there's tons of studies in sleep and, and chemicals that are put out into your body after you wake up from a nap. Maybe that's why hockey players or most professional athletes love Take that naps. two o'clock nap. Yeah, quick 30 minutes. But I'm telling you, man, if you get those hours in, <laughs> yeah. poof, all the power to you. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I, I don't sleep a whole lot, but my goal every night is nine, ten hours. 
realistically get eight and a half. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I mean, is sufficient for me. I just don't necessarily, um, you know, get to where I want to be. But uh, like you said, I think sleep, especially over my next two, two to three weeks, is going to be very important. And um, got to make sure we get it. Do you sleep well in hotels? No. <laughs> not at all and you're in a hotel up in chicago yeah training camp's tough for for sleep um <laughs> i just don't like changing environments some people can sleep wherever you know i, I don't really sleep on a plane i don't really sleep you no. know I, I like my own bed i have to have a certain bed or i wake up and oh my god it's like a sleep. thousand quilt count what's it called with the sheets the the nice quilt you, you like the you like the good stuff the bamboo sheets bamboo sheets yeah <laughs> i wish i had those <laughs> no you know for me like if I, if i have a soft bed like i it sounds bad, but you know, soft bed will ruin my back. Like I just wake up and I'm like, I can't move. But you like a hard bed? Yeah. yeah. Really? Big time. Yeah. So my bed um, at my place right now is quite hard. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You don't like the memory foam? Oh, no, dude, memory ch- foam. I can't I, see. That's a thing. If I have memory foam, I'm I will not be able to move the next day. <laughs> oh, because your body just sinks into it. Yeah. You become like a coma. Yeah. I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah, and wake up back sore and, and whatever. <laughs> so but no um yeah just some sleep some rest good nutrition and uh you know most of all get to spend some time with family friends and um you know get the mind right before before heading out yeah man that's good it sounds like you're in tip-top shape it sounds like everything's good you honestly yeah. sound like a kid who's 18 years old who's getting ready to turn 19 that wants to go to the bars like you just want to <laughs> get there you're just like can't yeah. wait you just want to get to camp you just yeah. you can't wait it, it's been it, too long like i yeah and you know what it's uh i enjoy the process of getting better yeah but i'm to the point where i'm like okay let's test ourselves now yeah. and um I, I just i just really looking forward to it awesome man well hey, i appreciate you coming on i know you're busy in these summers so the fact that you took time out of your day i yeah. appreciate it no no my pleasure i mean uh, it's great talking to you guys and 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 uh, you know, we see you around, especially at the Jordan Boy. That was great what you guys did. Oh, so. it was awesome. I love yeah. that tournament. Yeah. It was just great fun. seeing everyone in one. Like, like, whenever we do the podcast, like, everyone's just there. It's yeah. just great to kind of see everyone. Yeah. I mean, everybody's there. So you don't miss anybody and you get to catch up and whatever. So. I remember I was talking to Shaw and he was like, uh, when we train all the time, we don't really have fun. It's like it's work. Yeah. Yep. It's like as much as people think it's great to go skate with Sid and all these boys, like it's work and it sucks sometimes. And he's like, when you get to come out here and have fun and just shoot the shit all day, he's like, it's it's a nice yeah. relief, I guess. Well, nobody cares if you don't miss a or if you miss a pass. Yeah. Or if you're missing <laughs> that. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, that that's a great weekend and uh, glad that uh, I could have been a part of it. So awesome. Well, we, we might be coming up to Chicago. You never know. Yeah. We let might me be know going up to New York and we might make the trip up. So yeah, for sure. No, it'd be great to have you guys in town. And um, if you are, let me know. Some deep dish pizza or something like that. We'll go oh, get you some. You guys got to test it out. Yeah. And yeah. dudes wants to. I don't really care for it, but we'll <laughs> see. All right. Uh, everyone listening, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure to go to all of our social media outlets. Like, subscribe, comment, YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, SoundCloud, Twitter. I think I got them all. Once again, Matt, thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks We're for out, having guys. me. Appreciate it. Peace.